Hi, I'm Josh Jackson from Pace Magazine. I'm joined today on the couches at the Pace Studio with the cast of Into the Badlands, the new show coming to AMC. With me, I have Martin, Daniel, Artemis, Orla, and Emily. Welcome, guys. Hey, Artemis. Hello. <laughs> uh, so, um, I, I've seen the pilot. I've really enjoyed it. I really think it's uh, special to have something like this on TV. Uh, Daniel, can you just talk a little bit about how this came about that we have now a martial arts show on primetime television. Um, I think that was the goal of the show, is to create something out there that no one's seen before. And I think the genesis of this whole project came about when Joel Stillerman, head of production at AMC, was at the Man with the Iron Fist premiere, uh, the the kung fu movie directed by Riza. And our uh, executive producer partner, Stacey Sher, was also there. And they met and they had a conversation. They're like, why isn't anyone doing this on TV? And that kind of started the seed for this idea. And then eventually, you know, when Stacy was given the task to make this show, she started to assemble the team and she called me in Hong Kong and said, you know, they want to do a martial arts show, but we've never done this before. Can Do you know how to do it? And my, me and my producing partner, Stephen Fung, who is also an executive producer on the show and the action director, uh, got together with Stacy and the rest of the team. And we eventually got Al Mile, Al. Goff and Miles Miller, the showrunners and scriptwriters together, and then started to create this whole thing. And that's how it all started. And uh, coming on to this uh, project, were you, were you guys martial arts fans? Have you, have you been doing this in, on screen <laughs> before? How, well, I, 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 well, I'll just answer for yeah. myself to kick off. Why not? Um, no, I had, had no idea it was a martial arts piece. I just saw a piece of writing because we were sent scenes first off and asked to, to, to you know, uh, tape for them. And I just saw lovely writing for a woman. I just saw a strong character and I thought, I'm interested. And uh, this is a woman who is um, not going away quietly. She's going to stand up for herself. Then it became apparent that it's uh, this piece. I'll pass it along. Me next? Okay, I'll go next. Um, coming in, I had little to no martial arts experience at all. We mm -hmm. uh, were sent through a six-week uh, uh, martial arts boot camp that, um, that was sort of an evaluation of our skills, but also we developed new skills, whether it was flexibility, whether it was strength, whether it was technique, right. acrobatics. Yes, we worked on wires. Um, so coming in, although you know we were very new to this, all that, that process started... Uh, you know, get us get us going in the genre. I, before auditioning, I had to have had a, a physical, uh, exam. like fighting. Uh, no, not an exam. <laughs> they didn't test me, um, but some experience. And I wasn't lying, mm -hmm. so they were fortunate. I wasn't lying. <laughs> I could have, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I really could have. Uh, yeah. I lied, and I got the role. <laughs> right, great. <laughs> Well, that, that speaks to a little bit about, um, you know, the show, there's amazing action scenes, of course, uh, and, the, and the choreography um, is, you know, feels of a piece to, to some of the better um, martial arts movies that have come out recently. But, you know, that's, that doesn't end there, that this is not, um, this isn't 70s camp martial arts, this isn't, you know, this is an AMC show, and it feels like, I know you guys probably are getting the comparisons of what Walking Dead did to um, the horror genre, to, to what you're doing here, where it's a TV show, so it's, it's not just, you know, that's not just about the zombies. This is not just about the, you know, kung fu fighting. Um, can you talk a little bit about the storyline and the characters and what that means to, in shaping the show? I mean, I think that was a huge important part of it, to make sure that this is a show that appeals to a much larger audience than just, you know, uh, martial arts genre fans. And so in order to do that and, and to go along with what AMC's typical of them to roll out is good character drama, you know, and so that it was important to the creators, Alan Miles, to make sure that, that all the characters were three dimensional, all and the whole storyline was compelling enough to bring in a, a much wider audience than just people who like Kung Fu stuff. And I think with anything with action, it's really important that the story is strong, because if you just have you know, action piece after action piece after action piece and then a thinly veiled storyline, then it just becomes like porn. You know, you just skip over the story to watch yeah. the action, really. Yeah. And you don't, we, we don't want that. We want, we want it to be great in, in all aspects, whether it's the acting, the fighting, the choreography, the art direction, or the cinematography. We want all of it to be great. Mm -hmm. now, now, Martin, uh, you and Emily play Barons in this future world. Mm -hmm. um, you're you're in control of everything. You're fighters, but you're you're also 
sort of the top dogs of this world. What what is it that drew you to these characters that are b- both of them seem like just kind of complete badasses? Yeah, my character's very strong and unapologetic. I, I like that about her. She doesn't doesn't give a crap about anybody judging her, and she does what she believes in. The widow's the disruptor. She's like... Well, in, in some people's point of view. <laughs> <laughs> she gets in under everybody's skin and... and um, not everybody. Comes, not, well, some... some <laughs> I sh- okay, I shouldn't speak for Emily. Um, yeah, she's the, like the wild, the wild card. and You don't think that she's a threat, and then, but she, she certainly is. And um, she um, destabilizes everything. Uh, um, yeah. But there's, and there's a lot of people who... Uh, have a lot of characters who, every, you know, everybody not necessarily wants to be top dog, but they want to put forward their agenda in whatever in whatever way, in a in a in a, in a microcosmic cosm, microcosmic way, uh, in interfamilial or interpersonal relationships. They have the, that kind of dy- dynamic, and uh, in the, in the larger sense as well. So um, it's sort of mm, kill or be killed, um, you know, or, or watch your back. You're not sure you need people, but you can't trust them. Oh yes, you can trust them. Well, no, you can't. This mm. uh, this this dynamic is at, at play all the time. So there's a lot of, and there's also a sense of irony, I think, and a sense of humor, and a sense of respect and delight in what other people bring, what other characters bring. It's not just um, a kind of, uh, you know, a, um, you know, I I disrespect you and I wield carnage over you. There's this, there's a sense of dexterity of mind and of and of physicality that that makes it very entertaining for the characters uh, opposite one another and, and hopefully people who watch it. But I think what's interesting about Quinn's character is that he's the top of the food chain here and anybody who's at the top, people at the bottom are gunning for him. Mm-hmm. So then he's in that you know, unique position where he's in ultimate power, but he's also got people coming at him. And so there's this you know, sense of like, I need to protect that world. And it's interesting that his character is one of the few that's all the way up there and has that sense of, ultimate power there you mm-hmm. know, in the show. And for, uh, for Sonny and MK, there's a special relationship there where you guys are, are about to, it seems like about to embark on a, a quest together. Uh, can you talk about that, that relationship a little bit? Yeah, I think that our relationship is kind of reflective on many of the, the sort of films that you see in this genre where you see a master disciple relationship. And that's one feeling that we're going for. But it's also, you know, MK reflects on what Sonny used to be, maybe. You know, he's, he, re- he represents this kind of purity that Sonny had at one point in his life, but was taken away as he became a clipper and as he rose up in the ranks and as he became an ambitious fighter or region or whatever you want to call him. And, and, and so there's this real symbiotic relationship between the two of them because MK wants to learn to be able to protect himself he wants to control his the secret that we talk about later in the in the series as it starts but at the same time Sonny is also learning from MK as well so they're really you know two peas in a pod very much each other's like voice of reason mm-hmm. so I, I'm, I'm fascinated hearing about uh, uh, martial arts training camp uh, what was that like for you guys <laughs> um, for long uh, Interesting experience. We had no idea. I had no idea what to expect because I've never done a action fighting thing before. Um, so it's exciting and yeah, but I trusted. You know, Daniel and Stephen had our backs. Did, so did you? It's fine. Did you ever imagine? You know, a, a room full of people watching you take out uh, no the, the whole bar full no, of never. assassins. <laughs> I mean. No. Your your character particularly yeah, is is you know with with the uh, high heel shoe. Uh huh. Um, th- that was never in your uh, when you decided to become an actor that you would be the. Uh, no, the I mean, hero. <laughs> <laughs> you never know what's gonna what's yeah. around the corner with it's acting, the but this job, yeah, you know, so yeah. That, you know, you decide to act and you truly end up on top of a mountain or somewhere, or in high heels, kind of slashing. Or you get these tremendous opportunities to learn something you would probably never get to in real life, you know. You get to understand a life. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find people tell you things? Sometimes it's like like being a priest. People will come up and kind of, because they want their story told. So they will tell you the truth of something if you're portraying it, you know. Mm -hmm. And so it's Mm -hmm. it's quite fascinating, Mm -hmm. isn't it? It's, Mm -hmm. It's a great job. 
But the yeah, the six week training period was it was it was intense, very intense. It was nine hours a day. We went from nine to six o'clock. Um, went through a whole variety. Of, first thing we do an hour of stretching and an hour of uh, basic training, all the basic martial arts moves, roundhouse kicks, side kicks, front kicks, all that stuff. And then we'd go into um, wire work. And then we go into specific weapons that, let's say, Emily needed to learn how to use the daggers as well as the swords, and and uh, Aramis needed to learn to do um, backflips on the wire on the wire work, you know, stuff like that. And we go into specific things, so the day would progress. But the also the key part of that was to um, build up their stamina because when we're filming, we're filming like 12 hours a day, could be up to like five six days a week. It's 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 draining on you, so you need to be ready for that physically, and so that was part of it. And then also the part of that. Fight camp that was very important for Didi Koo, our choreographer, and Stephen Fung, our fight director, is to watch them train and figure out what things they were really good at and to use those to their advantage instead of trying to make them do stuff they couldn't do or were not going to be able to get to in a six week time. Because you can't make someone an expert martial artist in six weeks. That's, that's not possible unless you're in the Matrix and you can download that in five minutes. <laughs> but, but what we did was, you know, Didi has the vast experience of training uh, you know people who are not experienced into be, into becoming masters he worked on um the matrix so he trained uh carrie ann moss and keanu reeves he worked on kill bill where he trained uma and so all that experience that dd has was able to put on to these guys and to make them perform awesomely in the show you know and they integrated what we brought as actors to the characters as well mm -hmm. You know, sort of animal works, and the psychology of the characters. So things became quite specific, and they were they collaborated with us. I mean, their experience is extraordinary, and the manner in which they did it, they were very calm, very friendly, very gentle. So in amongst savagely attacking people, <laughs> we'd have these very gentle guides who know exactly what they wanted, and if they didn't know what they wanted, sometimes because there was a lot of improvisation, but you never felt unsafe, and they were very calm and very kind and it was it was a nice it was a nice thing mm -hmm. yeah so so daniel as well as starring in this year an executive producer um you know this was part of your vision putting together you've got first season um filmed now what, what's your hope for the story and where it goes and and what you can what, what you guys can do with this for season two or, or for yeah for the life of this show i mean what, what do you what do you where do you see this well obviously i hope that it has a long nice long <laughs> life um five six years anything or beyond that i don't know if i can still keep fighting for that long i'll be like what 48 or something but um um I think what we've got now is a really great start to the whole story. Um, there's potential now. You know, I've seen all six episodes now, and they haven't. They haven't. And it, the ending final episode is a great cliffhanger that leads into the second season. It's like, what is going to happen next? And I'm still thinking that because I'm not the script writer. I'm yeah. not um, the showrunners. And so they still have to go write that. But I see a great direction that this story can head into now. And um, it's great because it's a... It's an epic journey, but it's also a philosophical journey, and it's all these things combined together, and then this great human relationship stories, um, all combined together in this really crazy, bonkers fantasy world. Um, and the fact that we we're able to pull that off, and 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 pull it off brilliantly, is is amazing to me. It was it was it was a daunting task to begin with, um, but the fact that we were able to pull it off was um, was probably one of my proudest moments in this whole thing or in my whole career actually is that this project and be able to do what we did with it mm -hmm. well I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes after this first episode and uh, i really appreciate you guys coming in to the pace studio so i hope you have a wonderful comic-con and and congrats on the show thank you thank you, cool. you very much lovely to be here